in the 32-bit era, I was still in love with 2D side-scrolling platform games. And that's where the PlayStation 1 let me down. Hey, I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games. And today, I do the review of Try Rush Deppy for the Sega Saturn. Second Opinion Games. So in the game Try Rush Deppy, you play as an adorable little taxi cab named Deppy. And his friends decide that they want to have a race going across the entire country of the United States of America. Which is extra weird because this was a Japanese only exclusive game. Why did it stay in Japan? Especially because all the menus and everything seems to be in English? Well. I don't know, probably because the Sega Saturn was known for being a huge flop here in the States, so they just didn't even bother, even though it was all ready to be made and pushed out the door. However, if you were to import this game, you would find that it's awesome. One of the cool things I noticed right away is that even though you're a car, you run around on your back wheels. Now, I do enjoy the animation here, but it's a car. Just drive for God's sakes. And that's where I also thought that this guy's name was Derpy and not Deppy, because this crazy animation with him running around, and also the fact that every time he sees a boss, he makes this goofy face. Now just tell me that doesn't look derpy to you. So how do the levels work? Well, they work just like Sonic the Hedgehog levels. There's neon stars throughout. Well, that's your collectible. And then there are different paths that you could take. High paths, low paths, and everything in between. So basically, you it's up to you to figure out which path you want to go through and find the exit. Now, some paths are easier than others, but there's also secrets hidden throughout each of these worlds. There could be your friends that are locked in cages, or maybe you just have to help them out from the police, or save them. Like the police in general, there's a section where you have to throw them a life raft so they don't drown. Which, in the water levels, you really can't drown. You just sort of swim, because your car and cars swim. Yeah, that's something that actually happens. And you'll probably get hit pretty often. And that's okay, because you have a pretty sizable life bar. And by life bar, I mean gas bar. And that is the biggest problem of this entire game is the fact that your health is also linked to your fuel. So your health is always going down, you know, Adventure Island style, whether you're doing anything or not. Now you can duck, and then it sort of shuts off your car and does this sort of flat animation, which means you're not going to use any gas whatsoever, but also means you're not going to move forward, so it pretty much does nothing to actually help you out. And, yeah, there's that. Also, the gas is tied to one of your two main attacks, and your only way to really kill the bosses in this game, by doing the power dash. You know, just like Sonic, because these guys were super original with their themes in this game. So, yeah, you could actually hold down the button, charge it up really heavily, and unleash a devastating attack on your enemies. You could do this in the normal worlds, but it does eat up quite a bit of your fuel. Now the fact that your health gauge is also tied to your attack means that during the boss battles, they will continuously give you more fuel. Meaning, figuring out how to kill the boss is just the only thing you really have to do, because eventually you're just going to kill him no matter what. Making all the boss battles in the entire game a total, total pushover. However, they are really cool to look at, and I mean, these bosses look awesome. At first, now every time I see one, I just think that they just look like an animator's mishmash of stuff. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense what's going on with these bosses and how they were created. They just look freaking weird. Like everyone just sort of stuck stuff onto them. But it still does look cool. The levels throughout this game do look really cool. Most of them are bright and cheery, but some of them, well, you might have some rain effects going on. Or you could use your headlights. It really helps to mix it up and 
give you a different feel. You could be in a city, or you could be in the woods. You never really know what's going on in your travels across the United States. So everything feels rather fresh. And that's one of the greatest joys of this game. The fact that you can play through it again and again, finding all of its little secrets, enjoying the animations, and enjoying the crisp, sharp gameplay of a great action platformer. Now, when it comes to these boss battles, some of them can frustrate you a little bit, just trying to figure out exactly what the game wants you to do. But remember to hold that charge for the maximum attack, and you'll generally kill most people. Now, the second boss of the game I had a little bit of a challenge with, and that's because it didn't really tell me that I was hitting him in the right place. They do tell you right at the start of the, each boss battle where to attack. And usually they do some type of thing where you know for a fact that you hit him. On the second boss, you just don't see that. Also, there's this really cool boss later in the game after you get on top of a train. Because, you know, Japan loves trains. And then you have to work your way away from him. That is really cool too. Especially because one hit and you are dead by this boss. And it's just... Pretty interesting to see and pretty thrilling to actually do. When you do beat them, it's pretty satisfying as well. Now, the last major boss battle of this entire game is a marathon. I swear I spent a half an hour on him without dying before I finally beat him. You know how most bosses in video games, they have, might have like three forms. No, I think he has like seven. Yeah, seven forms. And it just brings down the whole game for me because I really enjoy it. I heavily enjoy playing this. But the fact that I have to keep on playing this last boss of the entire game for up to 20 minutes plus, oh man, it's rough. And it does take away quite a bit of the enjoyment for me. If you could get past that last boss in the game, well, then you could start a brand new game. And this time, you could find all the little secrets rather than just rushing through every level as fast as possible and see if there's different endings to the game. Also, thanks to Sega Saturn's internal memory, it saves your game. So you could always return back to it and play through it as many times as you want. Also, you could probably unlock a time rush mode, which is super freaking awesome on top of it. So you could uh, compete against your best scores on each map to figure out how the best way of doing everything is. That definitely adds some replayability to a game that seems actually rather short and that could probably be beaten in about three hours. Which, the fact that you could beat it in three hours might stink because the game's also super freaking expensive. Thanks, Derpy! for giving us a really fun game that only a handful of us will ever play because of its price tag. But you're not going to feel like you wasted your money because of those different playthrough options that I told you about. So, overall, how do I feel about this game? It looks beautiful. It plays crisp. It is something that I'm going to keep coming back to again and again, as I have throughout the years, because it's freaking a lot, a lot of fun. So, if you could see it for a reasonable price out in the wild, in Japan that is, well then buy it, because it's freaking awesome. And that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, I had a great time making it. Anytime I can spend with my Sega Saturn in a 2D platforming game, well, it's gonna be pretty awesome. And I highly recommend you get this one. Hey, and also, I have tons more Sega Saturn stuff yet to do. And if you haven't caught any of my previous Sega Saturn videos, well, check those out. And make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you again, guys.